the mud used in the old building has been recycled into blocks. They have a little bit of cement and a little bit of sand and they are customized precisely for usage in this building. Three kinds of bricks have been used. Waste fly ash from thermal power stations is recycled into high strength and quality bricks. These are used to form the outer wall. Compressed mud blocks to form the inner wall. The conventional red brick made in more energy efficient kilns developed by DA interspersed throughout the building. The three providing a variety of textures and designs yet durable enough to withstand the rigors of rain and other elements for years to come. What we found is that masons have got spoiled over the years. They just tend to stack up the bricks and throw plaster over it so that all the work and all the mistakes also get covered. Now in this, we had to get the alignment right. We had to get the consistency right. We had to get one or two very skilled traditional masons, use them as trainers to train the other masons and then at each point of time do quality checks to ensure that their work was consistent. These are ferrocement roofing channels or roofing shells. These are prefabricated elements which work on the principle of the very thin slender eggshells. They're made exactly to size, so means there is no material wastage. Secondly, they cut down the consumption of steel very, very significantly. The thickness of these is only one inch compared to four inch for an RCC cement slab, which means that we are using roughly one third or one quarter of the material, which is cement, sand, and no aggregate. Previously, over the last four or five years, we have been propagating the ferrocement channel technology. But this one was wider, which means in fabrication, we had to make a new set of equipment. And again, more importantly, we had never taken it up five floors. So we had to get a completely new hoisting mechanism such that it could be lifted up to five floors and also put in place. This building, there are more than 200 of these channels and we couldn't afford breakages because it was one of the most expensive structural elements. In a tropical climate like Delhi's, with temperatures in summer soaring to 45 degrees Celsius and in winters going down to even 5 degrees at times, the temperature control of the building was crucial. First design the building such that it catches and absorbs as little heat from the outside as is possible. One of the key features is the orientation of the building to the movement of the sun, keeping the east and west faces of the building blank. The walls are built in two layers with waste thermocol pieces in the center to help in insulation and climate control. To further combat the oppressive heat load, the roof is covered with a reflective surface made of leftover broken white tiles and sanitary ware, creating a homogeneous surface reflecting the rays of the sun. The important decision that we took was in terms of the range of temperature that we felt we could tolerate. So instead of you know a standard AC 5 star environment of 22 to 25 degrees centigrade, we said okay we can go down up to 
18, 19 degrees, when it's very cold, we put on a sweater, it's okay. And when it's really hot and for a few days, 30 degrees is fine. And we are all wearing half sleeves, t-shirts in any case. So it's okay. And we are comfortable in tolerating that. And it's a lifestyle statement we will make.